Hi, George here. Today I want to talk about using camera raw images here with Photoshop Elements. There's some considerations that you should make. There are some things you want to think about when you're making a decision to use camera raw or to use a standard format like JPEG. If you want to find out about how to do specific editing with your camera raw images, I have a whole video for that and I'll put a link for that upper right hand corner right there. But let's talk about the camera raw and the JPEG format. Most digital cameras today will be shooting one or the other or both. Most cameras use the JPEG format. Now the problem with JPEG is that it is a compressed format, which means that you're not going to be getting all of the information. It does the compression to save space in your camera or phone. You can get a lot more pictures this way. You can choose how much compression and that will be determining how many images you can fit into your card on your phone or your camera, but you will be losing a bit of information. But because the JPEG format is also an editable format, if your camera is doing or your phone is doing adjustments in there, you know, sharpening details, adjusting white balance, all those kind of things, the reason to use a camera raw instead is precisely because of those adjustments. You may not want to have any adjustments done by the camera, and you may prefer to do those adjustments yourself where you have far more control to get a much better result, much better quality. That's one of the reasons why you want to use the raw format. When you're working with the camera raw format, you need to understand exactly what this is and how it works. The most important thing to know is that it is not an editable camera format. You can't take a camera raw file and open it up in Photoshop Elements or Photoshop or even Lightroom. Even though Adobe says that you can edit them directly, it really isn't doing that. And the reason is that the camera raw format is a format that just contains bare information. It's not an actual visible image. Even here, I have this open up in my Windows 11 browser window right here. There's a camera raw image. This is from a Canon. That's why it says CR2 instead of RAW. It's a Canon EOS camera. And the actual image we're seeing here is a JPEG version of the camera raw image that is stored within the camera raw data. So we're really looking at a JPEG here and not the actual camera raw image. When programs like Lightroom, which claims to edit raw images, what they're actually doing is they're converting it to a different format that Photoshop uses and Lightroom uses called the digital negative or DNG file format. You're not seeing that in the program, but that format is editable and it can save edited data. Now, another consideration when you're working with your images here, JPEG image is an 8-bit image. That's a fairly small image. And that's a way of thinking about how many colors are in your image. The more colors, the higher the bit number. Most camera raw images are going to be shooting in 12-bit or 14-bit, maybe even 16-bit. Some high-end cameras can go higher than that. But in Photoshop Elements, which is what we're talking about here, Photoshop Elements only works in 8-bit mode. So when you're working with a camera raw image, bringing it into Photoshop Elements is going to be converted automatically to 8-bit mode. So before we get onto that next step, what you should do is if you have camera raw images, copy them from your camera or from your phone onto your hard drive someplace into a folder like I have my projects folder right here. And before you do anything in Photoshop Elements, make a copy of the file first. I'm just going to click on this one, right click, and I'll hit the copy button right there. And I'll right click out here someplace and hit paste. And that gives me a copy right there. This is now a copy of that file. And the reason why I did this is that I don't want to be converting this into an 8-bit image. I want to keep this as whatever bit it happens to be. I think this one is at 12-bit. So I want to retain that in case I want to use this later on in a different program that can work with a higher bit rate. So whenever you're working with your raw images inside of Photoshop Elements, make sure you always make a copy first before bringing it into Photoshop Elements. Make your copy in just the file folder. Then use your copy in Photoshop Elements this will be converted down to 8-bit. And again, that's fine for almost all uses. Now, if you're working professionally, and I do mention this a lot in the comments, you don't want to be using Photoshop Elements. You want to be using a higher-end program like Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, which can work at a higher bit rate. So again, for professionals, or if you're doing things that you're going to be selling, anything like that, that's not the right place to be using Elements, and you should be using a higher-end program for that. For everybody else, if you're doing these things for showing on the internet, you know, you're doing it just for the images, the visuals. Elements is perfect. If you're doing this as a hobby, if you're doing it for a genealogy, all these other uses for working with images, Elements is perfect for that. And that's really what it's best at. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open up this copy here inside of Photoshop Elements. But before I do that, I just want to remind everybody that this channel here and my Photoshop Elements here up on YouTube, this is all 100% fan supported. I make a little bit of money from the YouTube ads, but realistically speaking, not much. You have to have a lot of subscribers for that to even work well for you. And I would need to have a minimum 100,000 subscribers before that really began bringing any real useful income from those ads. 
which is why I always ask you to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Just click that subscribe button and that really will help me keep this channel going here on YouTube. The main way that I can pay for my time to make all of these videos is by selling my training courses for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn this program and I'll put a link for that in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get this opened up here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now you can't open up a raw file directly. If I go up here to File, come down to Open, even though it says CR2 here, there's my copy file. It's not going to open this up inside of Elements directly. It's going to be opening this up inside of the Camera Raw Editor instead. Two ways to get to that, either do it here and choose Open, or I could go up here to File and Open in Camera Raw, same thing. But let's go ahead, I'll just do the Open one here. And there you go, it opens up in the Camera Raw Editor right here, which is a separate program that comes with Photoshop Elements and is sitting here on top of the Elements program in the background. So I'm not actually inside of Elements right now. And there are a lot of things you can do here. Over here on the right hand side, this is just the basic editing section. We have temperature and tint, this is your color balance, white balance stuff. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance, saturation, detail is going to be your sharpening right down here. So if all of these controls in here that can be adjusted, if I change my exposure for instance, just bring this up a little bit like that, looks a lot better already. These are the kinds of things that most cameras nowadays will do for you automatically. Now I know earlier on I said that you cannot edit raw images because they're just raw content and it looks like I am editing this image. I've made an exposure change for instance. It does look different. Let me show you though what happens. I'm not actually editing the camera raw file. If I click on done down here, so I'm saving this setting. Here we go. And let me bring back up the file folder. And you notice here's the camera raw image that we were working with. And there's this new file just showed up. It's an XMP file. And this is a data file. It's called a sidecar file in this particular use. We have our raw image file over here and a sidecar file. The sidecar file actually contains those adjustments. So if I open this up in a different program, it's not going to get our adjustments from the camera raw image, which can't be edited. It's going to open up that image and then apply these settings to that image. The reason why I'm seeing this over here is that I have view hidden files shown. You probably won't be seeing this inside of your folders, but it is there. Now, if you're editing a JPEG, like we have right down here, the JPEG is going to be containing or saving any of your adjustments right inside the JPEG file. So there's no sidecar image attached to that. Good time right now to show one other reason why to use JPEGs instead of Camera Raw, and that's just file size. If you look right down here, this JPEG is at 2.11 megs, a good size image. If we go up here to the Camera Raw though, this is at 15.6. You can see that this has a lot more information contained in it, a lot more image information contained inside of this particular file. And that's the main reason why you wanna be using that. So if what you're concerned about is getting a lot of pictures on your camera or phone, then you want the JPEG format. If you want to have all of the information that the camera sees and then give you the most flexibility in editing that afterwards, then you want the camera raw file format, but you will be getting fewer images on your phone, camera, or your card. Okay, let's go back over to Photoshop Elements. We have our sidecar file right now already set up. So if we open this image, it's gonna come back in with those settings because the sidecar file is there. Let's see how that works. File, open, open this up right here, and it retains those settings. Now I still can't open this up inside of Elements. If I wanted to do Elements stuff, like use layers, do my filters, all those kind of things, I have to convert this from the camera raw format, including our adjustments that we've made over here that are inside of that sidecar image, I need to get that into Photoshop Elements somehow. And that's right down here where it says open. We can do open or open as copy. In this case, I'm already working with a copy, which you should be doing anyway. Click on open. It then opens up that image over here inside of Photoshop Elements. We have our adjustments because those are brightened as well. Now notice up here, this is another little funny quirk. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this video to get some of this confusion out of the way. Notice that it says up here, copy, dot cr2 it looks like we're still looking at a camera raw image because of the name up here but we're actually not at this point this is now a photoshop elements file or the basic photoshop file format the psd file format if i try to save this it's going to save it as a psd file it's no longer a camera raw image now i mentioned before that photoshop elements works in the 8-bit format this has also been converted to 8-bit if you look up here at the top it says rgb 8 right there this has been converted over to the RGB color space. In this case, I'll be using the Adobe color space for that. And it also has been reduced down to the 8-bit color mode. And again, for most uses, that's perfectly fine. But if you need to have the highest quality level, 
and you want to stay over inside of that camera raw editor as long as you can, make all of your adjustments there where you have the most freedom and then bring it over here to Photoshop Elements to finish things off. Let's go up here to Image and come down to Mode. You see right here, there it is, RGB. Notice that we don't have CMYK mode in here. That is not available inside of Photoshop Elements. You'll have CMYK in other programs such as Adobe's Photoshop program or less expensive programs like the Affinity Photo program that has CMYK mode available. And we're working in the 8-bit channel right here, 8 bits per channel. So that's 8 bits for each you know, red, blue, and green. And that's the bit level that Elements always works and we can't go up above that inside of Elements. Those are just two of the limitations that you have inside of Elements. But again, for most uses, that's really all you need. It's just fine. Let's go ahead and look at saving this. Go up here to File, come down to Save, and then notice right down here, it is saving it as the Photoshop file format. Same thing that Photoshop Elements also uses. It's not saving it back as a camera raw image because Photoshop Elements can't do that. We can save any of our standard formats in here, your bitmap, your GIF right here, your PNG or TIFF, all your standard formats are available in here, but the camera raw format is not available. So once we get it over here into Photoshop Elements, it's no longer a camera raw image. And at this point, since it's really, no matter what it says up here, it really is just a Photoshop Elements file, we can do all of our standard Photoshop Elements tricks and then continue to edit this as we would with any other normal picture. And just keep in mind that the Camera Raw contains all of the information available. And if you're using that with Photoshop Elements, you should always be working on a copy of that file, not the original. That protects your original for use in other programs. And also, as soon as it gets into Photoshop Elements, it's no longer going to be a Camera Raw file. Okay, if you like this video, why don't you hit that like button and click on subscribe. That does really help my channel a lot, especially those subscribes. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that in the description and I'll see you next time.